Isaiah chapter number 65, Jude, the 65th book of the Bible. I am sought of them that ask not of me. There's the people that didn't seek God, but they seek God. I am found of them that sought me not. Gentile. Come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the Jews in the tribulation period, that place in Revelation 12, that is prepared for them. They're finally going to seek God with the absolute help that they can't get from no one else. The world and Satan has turned against them. They don't even know what they're going to ask for. They're going to ask God to relieve them, and God sends them exactly what they rejected. The Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to ask God, and they're going to get Jesus. Now, if Jesus is not God, how do you answer that one? God, help us. Please, God, help us. Who comes mounted up on the horse? The King of the kings and the Lord of the lords. They call for, G they call for God, and they get Jesus. I am found of them that sought me not. They weren't looking for Jesus. But they get him. You know, I think as a child 13 years old, they have a bar mitzvah, which means they believe that that child could be the Messiah. And it's funny, I mean, you know, not to be cruel or anything like that, but, you know, I've seen some bar mitzvahs with fat kids. Do you think the, you think the Messiah is going to disobey the law and come in as a glutton? A glutton child it was to be stoned. Gluttony is a sin. Sinless Messiah would not be fat. Would not be rebellious. How I many 13 year old Jewish children are rebellious and get their bar mitzvah? That's a violation of the law. You know where Jesus was when he was 13 years old? He was, who is this smart aleck kid that thinks he, wait a minute, does know everything. And the Bible says he was asking, can you imagine what Jesus was asking them? Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, the Jews. God keeps reaching out to him. God keeps reaching out to him, which walk in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. So all the sins that we read in First and Second King, First and Second Samuel, First uh, and Second Chronicles, Judges, Numbers, the Bible says that's not good. That's their own thoughts. So those images, those idols that they made, that's not good. A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face. That sacrifice in gardens. Little garden knolls. Little bush with a statue in there. And burneth incense upon altars of brick. What was that altar supposed to be? It was incense. It was supposed to be gold. Shit them wood overlaid with gold. You know what they're doing? They're having a bar backyard barbecue. You ever see a house when you fly over with a helicopter or an airplane? You know, you got a, you got the tabernacle there. You got a house. Some have a pool. And then you got the barbecue pit. The house would be the tabernacle. That pool would be the labor. And that barbecue pit would be the altar, the brazen altar. That's what God sees when he looks down from heaven. You go to that barbecue pit, but you can't go to my temple. There is no temple. You go swim in your pool, and that was only supposed to be for the cleansing of the priests. You got to, he goes, uh, David says, you know, I, I dwell in a house of cedar, and where does the Lord dwell? David was worried about, because you know what? He lived in more luxury than God was. God was living in a tent. How many Jews today have a nice house and yet 
where does God dwell? The place that he is to dwell amongst Israel, there's the dumb of the rock. Supposed to be where Allah and uh, I forget which one that went to heaven with a lie anyway. So altars of brick. Supposed to be a sheet of wood and an altar of uh, laid, overlaid with pure gold, and only the priests were to go in there. Uh, we read about a man that goes in there, and Gabriel shows up and tells him about a son, John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, which remain among the graves. Wait a minute. That sacrifice in gardens and burneth incense upon Altars of brick, semicolon, which remain among the graves. They were having their barbecues in the graveyards. Do you know what holiday that is? That's Halloween. Halloween is many countries, especially Mexico, you go to the graves and you bring your, your, your dead ancestors food because, you know, they've been dead so long that they need something to eat and you bring the food to them. And... If you don't do it, you get a, you get a trick. But if you bring your ancestor food, you get a treat. You get to dine with the dead. And lodge in the mountains. Why mountains? What's wrong with the mountains? That's man's way to get to heaven. By God's means. God made a mountain. Well, as high as we can go, we can reach heaven. They tried to do that in Babel. That big, huge tower. They tried to do that with NASA, with those, those uh, launching pads and all the, the junk that they send in our space. And yet they have not found God. I wonder how far a a a, a bookstore is from, from NASA down south of us. Where they can get a King James Bible and find God. You know, I've been higher, I am higher than NASA's ever been. This Bible says I am seated in heavenly places. Who cares about Mars? Who cares about the universe? I have passed that frozen deep and stepped before the throne of God and say, Hi, Father. I got a prayer. I know a couple people in my, in my church are suffering right now with pain and, and a, a cancer and one that has an eye problem. Lord God, the Father, I come to you. And who cares about pictures of Pluto? I'm waiting a day that my ears will hear those cherubim cry out, Holy, I can just imagine what they sound like. Can't even reach it with, with mankind. And lodge in the mountains. Lodge. Which eat swine's flesh. Uh, uh, isn't there something in the law about pork? They're eating pork, pork and that was an abomination. So they're having pork ribs on their altars of brick. Come on, you think a pig roast, you think pork chops, on, and you think ribs on a grill is something new? It's in the King James 1611 Bible. There it is. We just finally caught up to the Bible. This is about 698 B.C. and they're, they're having barbecue. And broth of abominable things in their vessels. You say, what are those abominable things? Look at the law where it says what food they could eat, what they can't. Maybe they were having clams and lobsters and Crabs, you know, those were abominable. They were having New England clam chowder without knowing New England. Unless it had scales and fins, I'm not saying seafood, but, you know, broth and all that. The seafood was, was abominable. I don't know what other broth there could be. I mean, there's chicken broth, there's turkey broth, there's beef broth. I don't know what any other broth that would be fit under the law. I'm, I'm thinking of a kind of chowder, and I could be wrong. Which say, okay, this is what they say. That's a semicolon. We're not done yet. Which say, stand by thyself. Come not near to me. Get away. Go away. Luke 15:25 and 18:9. For I am holier than thou. Uh, when you're violating the law, you're holier than thou? Really? These are a smoke in my nose. 
a fire that burneth all the day. Don't really get that expression. The fire that burns all the day is, is a type of a fire that burns of hell. That was a fire that's supposed to be on the brazen altar that was never to go out. This guy's got his own altar going. This guy's got his own home religious service. Now listen, I'm not against home churches. If there is no church in your area to go to, then you start a church. You don't sit around, you know, in a round circle and everybody read their Bible verse and say, well, you have a guy who is in charge of that group, a leader of the Bible. And who cares about opinion is what God says. But here's a guy who is copying what God said for his own advantage and disobeying God while he's doing it. So you get up in the altar and you preach from a perverted Bible. I'm holier than now because I have a man's, man's work. I don't have God's work. I have man's work. And you're rebellious. Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence. Uh-oh. But will recompense. Uh-oh. Even recompense in into their bosom. Deuteronomy 32, 35. They're not going to get away with it. When God says, you know what? I'm going to speak. I'm going to tell you what is right. I am going to judge you. I am going to use the word recompense. You are in trouble. Your iniquities. Look what we just read. Everything that's wrong. Now, is, a, is a garden wrong? No, it says sacrifices in gardens. They're offering sacrifices to gods. Lord, please, will you let my cucumbers grow better? I'll give you a little something, Lord, if you let the, the potatoes grow. It burns incense upon altars of brick. And again, that, that word discussed, that's wrong. That's an abomination. When God smells a barbecue from a Jewish home that is pork, that is an abomination. That is an iniquity. Not for the Gentiles. They're probably Jews today. Holier than all Jews, they probably do eat pork. Violate the law, I don't know. Your iniquities, the iniquities of your fathers together. Your father's done what you do. It's nothing new under the sun, saith the Lord. That's the same Lord that said, Let there be let there be lights in the heavens. Let there be uh, light. Let there be the God that spoke the universe said saith the Lord talking about their iniquity which burneth which have burned incense upon the mountains now is incense wrong they're burning it for worship of the heavenlies the hopes anything but God listen you know if you want your house to smell a little better right, burning incense like that that's okay you're you're burning it for aroma you're not doing it for God. Listen, new age and all that, that's for the mother worship. That's for worshiping the spirits. That's to conjure. You know, that's, that's wrong. But, you know, if your house has odor from food, from dogs, from babies, or, or you, you want the house to smell a little better, okay, that's fine. But this is a religious. I remember, you know, <clears throat> the opening of the Roman Catholic Church, every time they'd be coming down and swing that thing, I hope they'd bat themselves in the head. With incense. It always made me sneeze or choke. That was to conquer the Roman gods. And God says it's an abomination to do it upon the mountain. And blasphemy, blasphemy me upon the hill. Ooh, that is a strong word. We're doing it for God, but you're blaspheming God. We're worshiping gods, but the God, Jehovah, we are blaspheming him on the hills. Over the hills and through the woods. 
Therefore will I measure their former work in their bosom. Ooh. God's weighing them out. Remember what, remember what the message was upon uh, Belshazzar's wall? You've been found wanting the balances. And then, bam, the judgment came that night. You know, bam, the judgment's going to hit Israel one day. God's going to tell Satan, all right, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to let you do what you want to do to him. He's holding Satan back now, like Job. Can you imagine when, when Jesus calls out his bride? Doesn't it say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod? What's God say in Proverbs is the proper use for punishing your child? He says a rod. You know what Israel is going to be punished by? They're going to be punished by a rod. What is the rod? It is the Antichrist. That's, is that kind of punishment? When you talk about you know, on the behind, the rod is going to cut off their necks. And drink their blood. Talk about it. Ouch. Thus saith the Lord. Jehovah. Capital L. Capital R. O. Capital R. Capital D. The Lord Jehovah says. To the Jew. As the new wine. Oh there's new wine. That's grape juice. Freshly squeezed. Is found in the cluster. You know what God calls the nation of Israel? Jesus Christ calls them in the parables. You know what's called over there in Isaiah in the parables? He calls Israel a vineyard. They're supposed to produce grapes to make new wine. So new wine is found in the cluster. What do you think new wine is by that one, two, three, four, five, six, those seven words? What can you figure wine is? New wine. If it's found in a cluster, it's the pure grape. You take a cluster of grapes, like Nehemiah did in front of the king. And you put the you put the grapes in the cup. You squeeze it in front of the king's eyes, and then he drinks grape juice. And one saith, "Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it." So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. God, God sees that, that God sees that cluster. He sees the grapes. He says, "You know what? I'm not going to destroy them all." How's that? God's all finished with Israel. No, He's got some brand new grapes that are growing. One day He's going to make a wine. You think turning water into wine was a miracle, and it was? You wait, he takes the raiment of Israel and makes them new wine. By the way, they didn't say they got drunk at that when Jesus made that water wine, you know. It just, they just said, ooh, it tastes good. They said it was the best wine. One day Israel will be the best nation. Now I will bring forth a seed of Jacob, a seed, you know. Some grapes have seeds in them. And out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, you know, where they're worshiping the false gods. And my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, sheep, goats. And the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in. Sheep, herds. For my, I don't know, take that, herds would be uh, cattle. For my people that have sought me, a place of resting, a place of feeding of animals, a nourishing place. But ye are they that forsake the Lord. That's not good. So, uh, no, not there yet. And forget my holy mountain, Zion, New, Jer uh, not New Jerusalem. They don't go to the temple. They got their own temple. In their backyard, in the mountain. Instead of the mountain, they're going to mountain. Instead of having the Bible, they got Bibles. Instead of having a church, they got churches. That prepare a table for that troop. That furnish the drink offering, Psalm 16, 4. 
unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword. Proverbs 124. I'm going to turn you over to an army. And you shall all bow down to the slaughter. You're going to try to surrender to, the, to them. To your enemy. And they're not going to, they're going to kill you on your knees. Boy, how many bowed down before Hitler that were killed? How many bowed down to Nebuchadnezzar? Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spanked, ye did not hear. You know, they never did listen to Jesus. Especially the Pharisees. And did choose that wherein I delighted not. What was that? anything but God therefore thus saith the Lord God behold my servants now watch this word eat show up in this chapter the second to last chapter of the Bible Jew Isaiah 66 the last chapter in Isaiah the 66th book the last book of the Bible do you know what happened that caused man to where he is today is because they ate something they weren't supposed to. Watch how often eat shows up in this chapter. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. That's an oxymoron. Are they going to have Chinese food? Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Never going to be enough. You know what Jesus told that woman at the well? Well, you can drink this water here, and you're going to be thirsty again. But I am the living water. Whosoever drinks of me shall never thirst again. You know what they've been drinking and eating? They they're not haven't been drinking and eating Jesus. I don't mean that literal. You wait till they take part of the living water. That's why how they latch on to eating Jesus, but they don't latch on drinking him like he told the woman at the well. For ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. Ye shall howl for vexation of spirit. Looks like that may be the, the Christian. While we're rejoicing, they're not. And we are the servants of God. We're supposed to be. You shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. So, what's one of the great uh, what's one of the great jokes out there? Jewish jokes. For the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name. That he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten. Troubles. Jacob's trouble. And because they are hid from my eyes. For behold, I create new heavens. Isaiah 51, 16, 66, 22, we're going to read again. Lord willing, 2 Peter 3, 13, Revelation 21, 1. You know why we've got new heaven, have new heavens? Because man has destroyed the heavens up there with all kinds of stuff floating about our heads. we got a whole bunch of junk sitting on the moon right now. But if I were to leave a car in my property, the city would come in and charge me for leaving a car in my property. Yeah, but we haven't charged the space people for all the junk they leave out there. Bunch of stuff flying around the earth right now. There's a bunch of junk that's sitting on Mars right now. They got a bunch of junk right now going by Pluto. They got that junk thing taking pictures of, of the solar system out there. They got all kinds of junk out there. As far as I know, I think they still got a rocket ship out there with a monkey in it. I think they still got a rocket ship with three astronauts that are dead in it. They got that space thing up there floating around. God's got to get rid of all that. Man has soiled. Man has brought a curse where man's not supposed to be. And the Bible says that the principality, Satan, all that, the powers that be, are in the heavens right now. 
Well, once God sends Satan and the, and the Antichrist and all them into the lake of fire, he can clean that domain where they were. A new earth. So you can't save Mother Earth. God's going to destroy it. You save it all you want. You ain't going to save it. God's going to destroy it. While he'll put your soul in hell for you not saving your soul. The trees will be gone. The spotted, the spotted arrows will be gone. And the former shall not be remembered. You're not going to remember the earth. You're not going to have to remember uh, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Saturn, Jupiter, blah, 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 blah. Nor come into mind. You're not even going to think. It says that you're not even going to think about it no more. You know the troubles that you got on this earth right now? The Bible says you won't remember it and it'll never come to mind again. You'll get the glory. What's cancer? What's divorce? What's a hospital? What's prison? But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. You see what's going to happen in the new heavens and new earth? Be glad and rejoice. It's going to be glad and rejoicing. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people, Jews, a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. God will be rejoicing. God will have joy, and the voice of weeping shall be no more. She'll wipe away every tear. You know that weeping came with the curse, the Eve first. It said the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her. Who? Jerusalem. You know there's weeping going on today? There are people who, who are dying in Israel today and have died, and they're weeping right now. There may have been a missile attack. There may have been a shooting. There may be a woman giving birth right now in Israel and crying, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old. How do you like that? But the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be a Christian. There's still sinners. In the millennium. They shall build houses. And inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards. And eat. The fruit of them. Gideon had to thresh wheat. All in secret. So the, so the enemy wouldn't come and take it. You know how much food Israel has, has grown. Has been given to the enemy. I mean some of that stuff. They got turned into the United Nuts. I guarantee the Muslims and the Arabians and the Germans and the Catholics have stolen food from them, I bet. They shall not build in another inhabit. They're building walls right now and moving them so they can get more peace. They're giving up their land for artificial peace. They shall not plant in another eat. See that word eat? Here it is again. Sin in this world came because Eve ate, being deceived. Sin came in the world because Adam willingly ate. Now they're going to be able to eat what they plant. As for the days of a tree are the days of my people. Trees live a long time. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's that four-letter word. There's that four-letter word that showed up before Genesis 3. And the curse is removed. We're going to see the curse is removed off the earth, but the four-letter word that starts with a double does not. So you have that four-letter word before the fall, you have that four-letter word during 
the fall, the curse, and you got that four-lettered word after the curse is removed off the earth. So what? What's America trying to do? They try to get rid of that four-letter word. You are in violation of what God says. Those Jews are God's people. They're going to be given a land that is completely blessing. They're going to be able to plant and, and, and pick that day, and yet they're still work. They shall not labor in vain. So it means everything they plant and everything they do is going to produce something. You know, when, when you want to do a garden and you plant your own seeds, you put all the seeds you got in a starter. They grow up. Not all the seeds produce a plant. Then you got to go through that and find out which plants look ill, sick, and they're not going to survive. You, you know, you have the power of God. You pick that plant and you throw it away. I'm God. I can say plant, you live or you die. And then you go back another week and you look at, you find the healthy ones, you find the ones that are not so healthy. You take them, you pick them, throw them in the garbage. Bye, you're dead. Until you can get how many plants you want. Now if you want 12 plants, you keep on going to, you've got 12 of the healthiest plants. And when they're ready, you put them out in the garden. This tells me that when the Jew puts a packet of seeds in the starter, all the seeds are going to come up and all the seeds are going to be healthy. Oh yeah, by the way, with the curse being removed off the earth, there is no weeds either. There will be no weeding. That is the result of Adam sinning against God by taking, he said, listen, by the sweat you're going to work, by the sweat you're going to die, and you're going to be thistles and thorns. That's the curse. Nor bring forth trouble. There will be no troublemakers in the millennium. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. That's the Jews. And their offspring with them. Their children are the Jews. It's all Jewish. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. How do you like that one? How do you even fathom that? You know, a parent can't do that with their child. A husband can't do that with his wife, and a wife can't do it for her husband. A wife cannot go into the kitchen and bring her husband a peanut butter, jelly, and fluff another sandwich. What's it? I knew you. I knew you wanted that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think. A husband can't bring home, after going to the grocery store, a shopping list that his wife never told him to get, and get it 100%. And yet God says, even before you call, I will answer. I don't think Jesus ever did that. You know, it says the Bible says he perceived their thinking, he perceived their thoughts. I don't think he ever answered. And he could, I, if you find it, show me. But I don't think a guy comes to yeah, yeah, I'll heal you. He, he had the mask first. He'll go up to, well, what, what shall I do do for you? And they would ask. I don't think there's a place where he would, okay, you're healed or whatever you. Now, maybe there was. He didn't say, Peter, okay, come out of the boat. No, he had, what do you want, Peter? Can I come out? All right, come. What do you, what do you men talk about? What do you want? Well, Lord, we want to sit at the right hand. We want to sit at your left hand. But here's the Jews, even before they say anything. They haven't even picked up their cell phone, guys. All right, hello. <laughs> There's no cell phone going to be in glory. 
And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So God is still going to listen to them, even though he's going to answer them before they even go. He's going to hear them out. And to break into a verse, and we're going to break into chapter 66, to show you where we are, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Now it doesn't say the wolf is going to feed on the lamb. Notice again, the eating. You're going to have a wolf and a lamb together, and they're going to eat. Do you know what Paul used as an illustration when it comes to those who are trying to deceive Christians? The wolf shall come into the, the flock. The wolf shall enter into the church. The wolf shall do this. Paul uses the wolf as an enemy of the Christian. Here, Isaiah says, the wolf and that very lamb are going to be together. They are natural enemies. When a wolf sees a lamb, he sees lamb chops. When he goes into a flock of sheep, he's coming out with a dead one. Unless the shepherd gets him. But here the shepherd's not going to get him. The shepherd's going to, there's going to be a time when the shepherd's going to see the wolf come. Okay. Come on in. Imagine, imagine in a moment, there's the, Lord, there's a wolf going. No, it's okay. Remember, David, we're, we're in the middle. Oh, yeah. I forgot. All right. Okay. Go ahead. You know, that would make David in panic if he saw a wolf. He had a lion and a bear. He stepped in and, and kicked butt. And the lion shall eat. There's that eat again. Straw like the bullet. The animals are going to be back to vegetarians. A lion is a carnivore. Carnivore. He eats meat, not the millennium. He's going to eat hay. So, you're going to have a wolf, a lamb, and a lion sitting there eating hay. Maybe with, with an ox or a cow. That defies. That is not today. You put a wolf and a lion and a lamb together in your backyard and go in your house. Within five minutes, you ain't got a lamb. A couple days, you may not have a wolf or you may not have a lion. They'll eat each other. You do that in the millennium and you ain't got no more grass. Uh-oh. Uh oh. And thus shall be the serpent's meat. Genesis 3.14. That is the curse of you know the only thing that remains the curse in the millennium? Is that serpent still eating dust? That is not removed. Everybody and everything has a, has a, has the curse removed off them, but that serpent is going through a thousand years. Still gotta eat this dust. Thank you, Satan. But we're gonna read later on that a child will can play with a with a snake and it ain't gonna harm him. A most dangerous snake you can find in the Bible, and a child can play, an infant child can play with it, but he's still gonna eat dust. A rattlesnake will make his rattle. You can pick him up and rattle him some more. He ain't going to do nothing to you. Try that today and you'll be in the hospital, if not in the graveyard. They, they, who? The wolf, the lion, and the serpent. Do you see Satan there? Do you see the Antichrist? There's your adversary is a lion seeking whom he devour, the serpent, Genesis 3, Revelation 12, and then the wolf trying to destroy the Christians. They, the wolf, the lion, and the serpent, or the Antichrist, or Satan, shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, save the Lord. Now the animals are not going to do you no harm. 
Satan won't do you no harm because he's locked up for a thousand years. The Antichrist ain't going to do you no harm. The false prophet ain't going to do you no harm because they are already in the lake of fire. And with that, the serpents do eat and dust. What a wonderful guy we got.